they're going to have to take apart every lead yeah, and yeah. reassemble them. Start again, yeah. Mm. Is that right? About the legs. Great flinders can sit back and sort of say, look, do we have to do anything? And the short answer is that they don't. They don't have to do anything. However, I mean, it's, I'm not talking out of school when I talk about E United because they're, they're quite open at league meetings to say that, you know, their, their future's always a bit rocky. I mean, they, they really, you know, they've, particularly in the last couple of years, have really struggled. But, but you know, again, use this hypothetical word, but, you know, if they were to, to not be functional as a club and, um, you know, you, you sort of sit back and you, I think you've got a club lot locked too that, you know, at one point in time they might sit back and think, you know, where are we better positioned geographically and who knows, I mean, maybe maybe that Eastern Air model would would work feel well for them, maybe it doesn't, but so regardless of what happens, I mean, but my point being is suddenly you could, you know, Great Flinders could pretty easily and quickly be a four-team comp mm. themselves. I hear that Cummins, the Cummins clubs are not really excited about the idea of driving a Kimber. Yeah, I, I think it's really probably pretty early to tell I mean, about that. I mean, I've, uh, obviously, East and Air have, have written to Great Flinders, their football and netball, um, about joining forces. And I think it's really important to use that terminology too, as opposed to the word merger, because merger sounds a little bit desperate and like something has to happen. But at the end of the day, albeit it's only a four-team comp, but East Nair's travelling okay. I mean, <laughs> Well, they play great flinders in the... In yeah, the, in the uh, Morlock Shield, that's right. Morlock Shield game. Yeah. Morlock Shield game. <laughs> Players now there, Clements can't take it. Great flinders, can't, oh, it's a high tackle, and he, the great flinders player gets the ball on quickly to Casey Carr. Carr now looking forward. Billy Brown. Still looking forward, Billy Brown, he takes the mark easily. Looks forward now. Undecided where to go. Comes out. Half forward flank, looking for Jordan Hine, can't find good spoil there. Brett Northcott. Brett Northcott takes the ball, he's tackled hard. Now Easton Air, get the ball out quickly. Turns onto his left, gets a handball, good handball there. Good work by Easton Air side. Oh, he, he, he should have kept going. Riley Mate there, picks it up, can't take Goes back to Easton Air. They're moving to Kenny, moves the ball back. Looks uh, like Racker Wasser again, kicks the ball along, looking for Sid Masters. He can't take it. Levi Brown catch it, gets a handball across. And uh, that was um, Joe Walker walking there, looking forward. And that looks like Geordie Hine, is it? He takes a good mark there, Barra. Yeah, so Geordie Hine on just outside 50. He looks, he's looking for Northcock. He's going to fly for it. Oh, that's a mark. That's a great mark. Got to the uh, forward of the pack there, held his position and managed to take a two-juggle catch there, Mark. Yeah. Their netball, from you know what I understand, is really strong as well. So, But I, I had someone say to me, uh, obviously, I'm getting stopped a lot and asked about this whole thing at the moment, but I had someone say to me, you know, why would Great Flinders want to team up with Eastern Air and all their number problems and their, their forfeits, but they haven't had a single forfeit up there this year. Mm, so, good point. in football, um, you know, Great Flinders, I think, have had about 14, so mm. between sort of junior grades and reserves grades, so mm. for lots of different reasons. I mean, that's not, you know, seeding time obviously puts a bit of pressure on people, but but Eastern Air's focus, I mean, I, I think there's some really proactive people up there. They've got some fantastic people in that league, both football and netball. And, and Ports have got a full junior list. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Really good juniors. And their numbers are, are pretty are pretty strong up there. So, um, but, you know, the, the people that want to discuss it up there and want to, want to sort of move things forward, they're, again, they're doing it for proactive reasons. They're not they're not doing it out of panic or um, no doubt about it that, uh, you know, in that league at the moment that a four-team comp, I mean, I know if I was still playing football, you'd think that that sort of three sides all comes around pretty quickly. But Yeah, and, and it's particularly unworkable because you've got such a disparity between the top two and the bottom two. Yeah, and there is at the moment. I mean, Ports won a, won a premiership obviously a couple of years ago, but and you're and right. And then didn't win a game the year after. Yeah, exactly. So, but certainly... Um, you know, Kimber and Eastern Rangers have been dominating the competition in recent times. And you, you talk to a couple of the players there as well, and at the moment it's absolutely no disrespect to the other mm. clubs, but they're, you know, they look forward to that game, I guess, and mm, maybe, too. you know, maybe Mortlock Shield and things like that. So, yeah, so, you know, that, that, whole, that whole thing with 
East Nairn, Great Flinders. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that has, you know, has to happen for that to even get to a, a starting point. Yeah, that's right. And you mentioned the netball. The netball's actually going really well. Everybody. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And, uh, you know, and Great Flinders have a few numbers issues in netball as well, again, for different reasons. I mean, Lock, Lock don't have an A-grade side at the moment, but, you know, hopefully that, that turns around. But, but yeah, at the moment, I think Great Flinders' sort of position on it is they're, they're going back to their clubs. Um, you know, they want to go back to their clubs, have their AGMs first, see what their clubs think, which is the right thing to do. You've got to listen to, you know, you've got to listen to your members and, yeah, and people in the club, you know, as I said, the, the parents and the players. So, um, you know, all things going well. And my, my personal view is I think they'll come back and they'll say, let's, let's go and have the first conversation, because why wouldn't you? I mean, you know, I don't want to <laughs> sound like I'm pushing that, but I mean, I, I can't find a valid reason why you wouldn't just at least go and meet, have the first conversation. You know what, they might walk away from that and say, it's just not for us, it's not going to work for, for either league. But, um, you know, I think there's, there's lots of things that, there's lots of ticks in it. Mm. Obviously there's some, you know, there's going to be some concerns. I mean, I guess first and foremost is certainly the travel. I mean, that's going to, um, going to be an issue for some, but if you really analyse that travel, um, I'm putting together a bit of information for the Great Flinders Clubs at the moment, but if you if you really analyse that travel, I mean, people have got to understand they're still going to play eight home games. Mm. So, you know, this club here, Tummy Bay or, or Ramblers or Cougars out at Cummins, they're still going to play eight games there. And then on top of that, you know, you're still going to, Tummy Bay is still going to go out to Cummins and play a couple of games. They're still going to go to Ungara. They're still going to go to Kaku. But, you know, probably four times a year, they're going to go to Port Neal and Cleve and Cow maybe and you know and maybe Kimber I mean depending on how the draw would sit and you know there's no there's nothing been we're not you know nowhere near that stage of uh, looking at draws and stuff but you might only have to go to Kimber once every two years but you know it's, it's interesting and already there's as you can imagine there's lots of people who've got lots of views on it and some are really bullish about it and support it and you know you, you, you hear people say well Let's pack the family up and stay the night up there, and you know, and enjoy the hospitality and Some vice versa. Will. So, yeah, they will. Yep, if if it were to happen, and and I think there is while while you can't really predict it, I think there's there is a good opportunity there. And again, I'm I'm very hypothetical conversation here because as I said, it's a long way away. But and you'd go that that far maybe for a really good game, but in the case of Locke going all that way to get a 30, 40 goal hiding, yeah. maybe a bit different. Yeah, well, that's right, that's right. But, but Locke have, um, Lock have been pretty competitive. Apparently they've at the moment. got a few in for next year, so yeah. they're a bit more competitive. That's right, and you know, and they're, they're a good club up there. I mean, they got, as every club does, I mean, they got some really good people that, that work really hard there. So, um, you know, I only heard last night at our, had our Great Flinders had our male medal night Mail medal dinner and netball dinner last night, and um, we'd heard, you know, I mean, it's, we're still in this season yet, but we're we're uh, potentially United have have looked like they might be on the improve next year, of course, as well. So I um, think possibly looking at a new coach and and a few players teed up. So I mean, again, you know, they've they've certainly made a decision as a club to to push on and have a crack at things. So which costs money. Yeah. Does I mean? Well, unfortunately, it does. <laughs> it's another. It's another story. Well, if you don't have if you don't have the population like Elliston and like yeah, like, then you've got no choice really. Yeah, I look, E United. I mean, effectively, I guess they're relying on that farming district out there. Some people from Tumby, and they're only twenty k's from Tumby, mm. and no doubt, no doubt about the fact they do they do rely on players from Port Lincoln. Mm. So, at the end of the day, they have to. Mm. I mean. People, numbers, players aren't gonna aren't gonna come out of thin air out there, and mm. you know, and that, and that in itself, that that's another whole interesting topic. You know, the the players that well, on, on on that topic, and of course, that's just a given. That's that's the way it goes. But yep. obviously, they're in that position because they are a you know, small population. Yep. I mean, if you look at that map that I put up on that state of play thing. Yep. Um, the smallest clubs on Air Peninsula, geographically, are not that far away from each other. Yeah, that's right. You're talking lock. Ungara, uh, Elliston, what am I missing? 
Oh, Port, Port Neil. Neil. Arno Bay. Yep. And they're, they're about the same size population. Would there be any way that those clubs that are on about a par could play each other? Potentially. I mean, that's one thing that's been spoken about at the moment. You know, is there a way of doing some zone type stuff and, um, you know, the better sides play each other and, um, you know, almost and some of those lower sides, if, they, if they're winning games, you know, work themselves up into that, into that division. So, division one, division two? Yeah. Mm. So, you know, it's, and it is, it's certainly a worry, I think, and I, I can't imagine that even the clubs winning by big margins uh, actually find it that enjoyable. And I don't think anyone really wants to see 30, 40 goal floggings. And, and it's not great for footy because, I mean, as you pointed out, I, I think, uh, again, only because I, I, I live here, but the, the Tumbia United is, you know, it's a bit like the local showdown, I guess. It's sort of the, the power on the crows top scenario. And when Air United were pretty strong a few years ago, there would be a massive crowd to come watch a Tumbia United game. But, you know, Air United have had a really tough period in the last two years and obviously didn't win a game this year. So, but you notice that at the, at the games, you know, people think, well, Am I going to go to there? Am I going to stay and watch a game on the box or, or whatever it might be? So no, no one really enjoys the flogging. In fact, nah. Yesterday at the Midwest Grand Final, yep, it was really, mm, in, oh, it was really obvious and a, a bit sort of embarrassing that uh, when Streaky won by twenty goals, mm -hmm. not a single spectator, not one, ran onto the ground. Yeah, yeah. That'd be a kick, I reckon, wouldn't it? I don't think anyone got a four on that one. That is a kick to Woodner. And Zane Petty, Zane Petty will have the kick out. From the back pocket, cars are starting to leave the ground already. Yep. So the riding's on the wall. Game over, I'd say. Jaunty Seal. Gosh. He's, he's been exceptional today, especially his marking. Unbelievable. Great, batch, great batch across. Try him. him. A little bit of freedom for Woodner here. They haven't had it very often today. Has another bounce, the young fella. He's just going to find someone here and he finds uh, Remy, Remy North. North. He's wrapped up. Can't tackle. Hicks. By Hicks. Back to Lim. Tyson also wrapped Mont up. has gone a little bit high on the young fella. Give me another look. Looking for Walker on the big long lead. No, he can't get hold of it. See you underneath. Picks the ball up, picks it out. Jackson over the top. Brad Lim. Got a chance to get a goal here, but looks out wide to Zwar. Zwar into the square, surely to Hart, but goes around the corner and kicks a goal. And again, the crowd Cons are up. Consolation <laughs> goal, but the crowd's pretty happy with it. <laughs> Henry Zwar with a goal for the game. He gets a highlight. He gets a highlight. Give him the highlight reel. And the umpires seem to think that it might be all over. That's the siren. Uh, yes, it is. There is the siren. Well, well done, West Coast. And Hawks. the score is taken the... off before we even can look at it. Well, it was 20, was it 20, 20 25 to, to 6 goal 5. Yeah. Um, uh, and, 145 uh, to 41. Almost a bit of an anti climax there. Eh? Yeah, I think the Hawks are struggling <laughs> to. Uh, just get excited. <laughs> the, um, but, sorry? Yes. <laughs> it is. Well, well done, Hawks. And, you know, they, at the end of the day, they were clearly the best side all year and deserve their win. Yeah, well, I think, you know, it's a bit different when a crown final or 20 go either. They probably knew they had it won at half time. I, I, I think seen they, the scores. they knew they had it won in February. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's, I mean, they've, they've been an absolute powerhouse this year, the West Coast Hawks, and, and strong across all, you know, all grades. But yeah, well, they took last year's best team, even though they got done at the grand final, mm. narrowly. They were the minor premiers. They were the yeah. lot, drop one game all year by one point. Yeah. They were the best team. And then they've added, well, this year's male medalist and, yeah. uh, no, was, and Kenny, who was best on ground yesterday. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I think good. 15 grand finals in a row for them, I think they've played in now. So um, there, there are obvious imbalances. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Obviously, it was a little bit one sided today. Absolutely, and this, we know that. They have a, if you have a look, yeah. I think there was a, uh, a graph or, or some sort of 
thing you had on your previous thing was something like 4,000 people population in the in the, the Streaky Bay area. When you look at that and then you you add all the rest up, they've got as many as what the, all the other clubs have got. Which is together. a fact of life. It is. And it, it actually does mm. skew the results a fair bit in the mm. way of, of success in football and netball. Mm. That's life, you know. Mm. That's the way it goes. So. That's right. But they don't, I gather, they don't really have the numbers to be two clubs. Uh, well, it used to be virtually. Mm. Uh, there used to be three. Yeah. Flinders as well. Yeah. Well, uh, and I mean, I'm not talking out of out of turn here, but I mean, in some ways it possibly wasn't the ideal thing for a, for a league. Yeah. Uh, there was big change in that period too because mm. you had the um, formation of Midwest mm. uh, in 1987, I think it was, and um, and that resulted in a whole lot of big, big changes mm. for clubs and the Western Districts was formed and all mm. sorts of things like that. Mm. Uh, I mean, I look at uh, Eastern Air, well, the situation there is, you know, you, you think about some of the big club, the big club there is Kimber, mm. same situation. They probably, you know, it's actually a little bit the same in some ways. They haven't probably helped the league in, in some ways either that way. Ted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good on you, Blake. It's certainly certainly true to say that anyone who wants to join in with your league mm. uh, will be coming in on your terms. Well, that's probably the preferable way, but it's sort of... I guess at some stage things will start becoming a bit more difficult as it goes. We, we're not... We're not um, we're, we've got a, we've got a couple of clubs that are probably struggling at times too, so um, we, we're aware of that. Um, but, possible amalgamation. But yes, there's amalgamations and there's possibility that we may end up with just four clubs, you know, and that's the situation that what some of the eastern air and the far west have. And uh, it's distance that causes some of the issue, I think, when it comes to the whole the whole thing of, of a league amalgamation or mm. um, rationalisation is what they call it. Mm. Um, we don't feel that it, we we need to have a situation where it, um, it's 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 sort of coming from the top down. We want it to come from the people up, and the clubs don't want to see it come down from S A N F L from from the top, they, or even the E P Council. That is that is probably not the right approach. Um, people really jack up on those sorts of things, and it'll cause more grief than I think they wish to. Yeah, so possibly the John Gascoigne, oh, I'm going to tell you, is yeah, maybe well, right. not... No, well, it's not for going to make people these happy. types of people. It'll make, it'll make them rather up, yeah. upset. But you're probably in the box seat. Yeah, we're probably the pivot point when it comes to some of the uh, other leagues around the place. There's certainly problems and issues with uh, some of the, the Far West mm. and the Eastern Air Leagues. But quickly on Far West, they, they, they're on their last legs. They are. Mm. And... Uh, but they're going to have to come to Midwest, if they do, on your terms. Yeah, well, they're not going to have a lot of choice in the matter, I'm guessing. So it's really a case of, um, I mean, we're always fair types of people, but I'm mm. guessing that uh, we'll just see where it ends. They might be able to keep going for another year or two or whatever, but it's a, it's a situation that will change likely in the, in, yeah. in the not too distant and, future. And just, just quickly, there's a lot of travel involved if, Absolutely. if they do from Sojourner. Yeah. So I guess when you get the number of people in Sojourner who are prepared to travel, it might look like uh, two clubs. That's right. Yes, who are I prepared think tra to travel. Travel will, mm. travel will be a big factor when it comes to mm. participation in football and netball. Mm. I think there's going to be, uh, that's going to be one of the big difficulties and I don't know that uh, I, I think you know there could be almost wastelands mm. of football and netball if mm. if you know in between big centres mm. because they won't necessarily want to travel they'll go and do something else mm. which is already s sort of starting to happen now anyway mm. you know. well, so, sorry what what's what are you doing okay so uh, in in recent years we've had to the clubs have come to the league and said well we need to change things we've mm. suggested ideas mm. We've had to uh, become quite proactive and quite responsive to uh, different situations that we, we have to deal with, like lower B grade numbers. So we've actually now can play with 12. Hmm. Uh, we've got a modified Colts competition hmm. where there's less numbers. There's certainly the Hawks have a few more than most of them, but we, we share them around a bit more. Hmm. They can play a modified um, um, game, which is probably likely to, to be next year. That'll be uh, full time. You uh, trialled it this year. Didn't we you? trialled it in the in the uh, middle round, yes, yeah. and then it was um, 
quite successful. A lot of people said there's a little bit of tweaking, but this is mm. always the case, you know. Mm. You'll always tweak it and make it work. That's, mm. that's our whole idea. Uh, we've got other, other things we'll consider. Um, I don't know. We'll leave it to the clubs to uh, make some of those decisions. But we've had certainly, certainly trying to um, be quite willing to change to, mm. to help keep our league working well yeah. and our clubs to be as successful as possible. That's mm. how all things. So. Oh, just quickly on Elliston, as we are in Elliston. Yeah. Midwest or Great Flinders? Uh, I'd hope they stay with Midwest mm. at this stage. They, they're very keen to stay in this, mm. this league. So uh, I don't know, I mean, if, if the whole thing was divided up, well, they probably would fit down in Great Flinders, but uh, yeah. at this stage, they're very happy where they are. Mm. So Great people. That's right, they're good people. They're all the same. Thanks very much, Thanks. Manny Cook, good. once again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's great. No worries. See you inside. Ah, will do. Thanks, good. buddy. Thanks. Thanks right. Good on you, mate. Yeah, I mean, there'll be people out there that are, you know, I think everyone's a little bit adverse to change, but... Yeah. You know, I think if you look at most leagues now, I mean, any time you're having forfeits or struggling with numbers, I think that's a bit of a bit of a warning sign that you know maybe maybe something does does have to change. And there's there's lots of ways that can happen as well. You know, it's uh, that's a real key thing too. The footy council and certainly in my role, we have no jurisdiction to to tell a club what to do or a league for that matter. I mean, we're purely there in an, an advisory manner. But I think the one key thing for me is that. Anyone that's you know discussing things or talking about things, they've, they've certainly got the best interests of what you know is the future, mm. particularly for kids. I mean, that, at the end of the day, that's what's important. Mm. So, um, you know, yeah. I mean, it's interesting in it because there, there's actually a you know tried and tested model for football, mm. and I'm I'm talking football because of what I'm about to say is you know, but it would marry up with netball as well, and and netball is really important on you know, they're 100%, it's got to be included in in any discussions. But look at SAP Saza. I mean, mm. you know, to me, it's a perfect model. You've got if, again, a big if, if there had to be change. I'm not certainly saying it has to be, but I think everyone is probably agrees deep down that, you know, at some point in time, something has to give. But the SAP Saza model of, you know, the, the lower air peninsula, the central air peninsula, and the western air peninsula is a, geographically, is a solid model, you know, I mean, and that potentially involves, you know, two or three or whatever the number could be of clubs in Great Flinders going down and playing in Port Lincoln, but mm. it's it's <laughs> the furthest thing away from anything on EP at the moment. I mean, I know there wouldn't be a Great Flinders club that would agree to do anything like that without that football netball alignment. It's just way too important. I mean, yeah. I'm in my role at Sanf, I also sit on the newly formed EP Footy Council and their number one driver is they don't want to see any clubs disintegrate. Mm -hmm. They just want, you know, thrive, thriving, not surviving, I guess. Because of their role in the communities. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, Tony Irvine's the, the chair of that and he's a, Tony's a, a, a pretty bullish guy in, in general in his demeanour, but absolutely passionate about not only local footy clubs and netball clubs, but communities as well. So that's that's really important to to him and to the council. And I think, yeah, it's going to be interesting. There's some interesting times ahead. That's for we sure. We live in interesting times. Comes out now, <laughs> out to Bobby Rakawasa. He's looking out wide, trying to find out here. Oh, good spoil! Oh, great! The ball wasn't a mark, but of course, play on. Player there in Noel. Noel gets it forward. Berger can't take the mark, comes over the back to Great Flinders, now on to Xavier Watson. Watson gets on his wrong foot, on his right, kicks it out looking for and finding. That looks like Murphy for me from here. Matt Dyer. Oh, Matt Dyer is it? Okay, Matt Dyer now. Looking, goes forward, onto his left foot. Oh, lovely long kick to centre wing. Up they go, great mark. Jordan Hines. Jordan Hines, great mark. Plays on quickly. That is definitely a contender for the West Coast. EP, EP, EP surf. EP surf, mark of the day. Yeah, that was and quickly on the Mortlock Shield. Yep. They've been incredibly strong, great flinners. I mean, and I think, you know, that's given them a reputation as, as probably one of the better country leagues, you know, certainly on EP, but not only EP, but in the state. But yeah. you know, I think, uh, obviously, they won the Mortlock Shield this year, which, which Michael Curtis was, was coaching. And um, I think uh, last three years preceding that, they hadn't lost a game at Mortlock, but just things hadn't gone their way percentage-wise. So for them, to, for them to get it this year was was a good thing for them. So, and obviously they're, you know, they're pretty, pretty proud of that. And 
mm. you hear <laughs> you hear sort of lots of people saying, is it time that the Great Flinders was split into two, like you know, like the Lincoln City, Lincoln Districts thing. But um, but look, it, it'll go in ebbs and flows. I'm sure. I mean, the the you know, all leagues are no doubt pretty competitive. And I thought that was one real positive of the Morlock. I mean, obviously there was a lot of debate about the the two sides going out, and Far North were obviously finding it pretty tough. I think the Sharks concept was was a fantastic concept. Um, but, you know, the decision was made that it was to go going back to, to six legs, or effectively that was kick-started by Far North saying they couldn't put a side in. Um, I sat in on a meeting and, and Joe Pebber, you know, who has been sort of the driver and instrumental in getting the Sharks up and going, done a, done a power work to Joe, like he's, mm. he's a guy that you know, even though he lives in Adelaide, he's very passionate about football and EP as well. So um, he basically put forward that, you know, look, it's going to make sense if we withdraw as well. And um, so it went back to six teams, which a lot of people were, were struggling with. And But at the end of the day, that's how Mortlock Shield started as well. But certainly the highlight for me this year was that every game down there was really competitive. Mm. It was good. And it was good footy to watch. It was good close footy too. So, yeah. To be honest, I thought the six-team six format was terrific. Yeah. I. I mean, I I don't have a view that there shouldn't be additional sides in there, but I, I have absolutely no problem with it being the six EP zones, you know, competing. And I mean, it's how it's how it was born, it's how it started. And of course, that will change if the amalgamation with Great Flinders and Eastern Air goes ahead. That yeah, well, would it, you, would you, would they still compete? Maybe, maybe then you'd have two teams. Well, I think the early conversation around that is that they would just go back to their leagues of origin effectively for Mortlock so um, you know as I said it's a very hypothetical conversation to have of course but um, it's you know in a 10 team comp potentially I mean it, Great Flinders might there might be one club that could go into that zone so it's five teams each and you know depending on if anything was to go ahead there I mean you know this, what's the league going to be called? Is it still going to be called Great Flinders? Is it going to be called Great East? And I mean, who, you know, to me, I think that's a, I don't, I wouldn't see that as a stumbling block if anything was to happen. I mean, I think there's far more important things to worry about than what a league's, yeah. league's called. But I mean, Greater Air, probably. Yeah, well, that's right. You know, it, it, it could be called anything. And I think the early indication is, I mean, you know, Again, this is probably the proactive approach from guys in Eastern Air. Um, you know, they're pretty open about the fact that they're not too hung up on that. I mean, they're, you know, that whole that whole proposal as it sits right now, um, and who knows, as I said, where it's going to go. But that whole proposal that sits right now is is really, in essence, pretty basic. I mean, Eastern Air are basically saying we we want to put four clubs into the Great Flinders League, and and while I don't want to be flipping about this, I mean, the Great Flinders League and the, the Netball Association and the clubs, I mean, they've, they've effectively got a pretty simple decision to make, I think. I mean, um, I know there's a lot of emotion about it, but you're pretty much saying, do we, are we happy, to, are Great Flinders happy to accept another four clubs in there? So, um, you know, putting aside travel and things like that, but as I said earlier, I'm not sure that's as big a deem as what people think. I think there's, there's look, there's so many things that could could happen in the landscape of footy and netball and it's not to say that anything has to happen like you don't no one's out there saying that we're going to have to do something but one thing I mean I've been in my role with Sample now for about eight or nine months and in that time I've you know you speak to a lot of people I mean the, your job is football so you're just constantly talking football with people but I haven't spoken not one person has said to me that they believe the future of football and netball and its current structure is sustainable so but you know, no one really wants to dip their toe in the water first either. So, so if the clear message is, is out there that it's not sustainable and you've got forfeits and there's, you know, you, but another major, a massive issue is just volunteers and people being able to, That's true. to carry out tasks. I mean, player numbers are one thing, but it's, it's hard work running a footy club. I mean, I think it um, might have been Scratch Lovegrove, I reckon he, I think he did a little calculation it could have been buck I'm not sure who it was but there was a, a figure bandied around that there's about 170 hours of work that goes into running a game of football and netball on a weekend and when you start from training 
tease, you know, if you if you tally up all the work that the goal line pies are going to do, the, the people cutting up onions in the bistro, you know, the mm. people beyond the bar, the canteen. So, mm. so if you think if you think about that, and you've got a hundred. 130 members in your club, I mean, that means they've all got to do, you know, an hour and a quarter each and there's 10 that may not do anything and there's, you know, so that means someone else has got to do extra. And I mean, every club you go to, every club's got the lion-hearted people that... that they've got the someone else who does extra. Yeah, absolutely. They, they, they do man the task. But, but you've got to be really careful. I mean, you, I also talk to a lot of people that are getting, they feel pretty burnt out from that too, because as I said, it's a, it's a lot of work and, um, yeah, so... You know, that's that does burn people itself. out. It does, and mm. you know, and we're we're pretty conscious of, you know, how can we, from a sample point of view, but also the EP Footy Council, how can we make things less onerous? I guess how can we put structures in place to mm. to make life easier for for clubs? But well, there's lots to look forward to. Payson mm. Murphy, thanks very much. You've been great. Good on you. Thanks yeah. for the time. All right, cool. Enjoyed it. Good stuff. <laughs>